Welcome back once again to another episode of Jack's Tech Corner. This is another video tutorial of using Photoshop Elements. I'm your host, Jack. Next, let me uh, say everybody out there purchased the DVDs, thank you for the positive feedback. Everybody said it's going well and you're learning a lot. That's the key element to uh, doing any of the Photoshop stuff. And when you're watching those DVDs, it's great that you're able to stop and pause those. And they're high resolution. You said that you can see it very, very well. And it's working. So that's good. It's a positive note. For those of you out there that have not picked up the DVDs, by all means, stop to my website, jackstechcorner.com. All one word ran together. jackstechcorner.com. You can pick up either the first volume, the second volume, or you can pick up a two-volume set. Or there's a Mac volume out there for you Mac users. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I thought a lot more people out there using the Mac would be uh, picking those up. It's Photoshop Element 6 with um, iPhoto. And there's some even iPhoto 09 stuff in there. So the brand new iPhoto stuff is in there for you. Teach you a little bit how to use it and uh, how to interact with your Mac uh, with Elements. Also, there's for uh, the Mac user wants it all, there's a three version set. You get Volume 1, Volume 2, and the Mac version. Also, don't, don't forget to stop by my website, jackstechcorner.com, if you're looking to buy Green Screen Wizard, uh, doing green screen photography like you see on the screen here. You can see a green screen uh, picture here. And um, you can use that software. It, it's a plug-in. It goes right under your filters. There's Green Screen Wizard. And you do a three-layer system, and it actually removes or it does a chroma key on your green screen. So there's a lot of great information over at the website. You can also join our web form. And there's also a new Ning site. If you don't know what Ning is, Ning is a social networking site a lot of people ask for. It's Jack's Tech Corner, period, Ning, N-I-N-G, dot com. Go there and sign up. There's forums. You can, I want you to post your pictures there so I can see what you've been up to. Okay, we're going to start in this video tutorial and I thought I would talk this time about actually um, not using the green screen wizard, but we're going to cut this picture out of here, and we're going to put this onto a another picture. And I know I did this before called picture in picture, but I had a few people email me when they're doing this procedure and said, Jack, it looks fake. It looks like I pasted somebody into a picture. And granted, that depends on your background. You know, if you've got a wild background, you paste somebody in there, it probably won't look real. But we're going to try to blend this the best we can. I'll try to pick out a background. I'm not going to use the green screen wizard. We're just going to use this uh, picture here. And we'll cut the person out and pull them over onto an, another picture background. And then I'll show you how to kind of blend that in to make it work for you. Okay. So we have this up. Let's go ahead and go back to my organizer. We are going to go to backgrounds. And I don't want a standard background. I'm going to go down here to tropical backgrounds. We're going to look for a tropical background here to uh, put this in. And like I said, sometimes if you take that person and put them out in the middle of the ocean, it's probably not going to look too real. Right? I mean, that's just not going to work for us. But we want a background that's a little busy so I can show you how to do a little blending. We're going to take this background right here. Let's throw that up in the editor. Okay, we have it in the editor right here. We're going to fit it to the screen. And now we're going to use this uh, actual picture right here. And what I'm going to do this time, instead of using a green screen wizard, we're going to use our quick selection tool. Make sure we're on plus here. And I'll up the, uh, I'm going to up the brush size here just a little bit. And uh, up the brush size. And we'll just make a quick selection. All right. And we'll go here, and then we'll just go right up around. Oops, too much. Let's take off some of that green here. Okay, we're just going right around here. All right, now I'm going to just lower my brush size using the bracket keys. And we'll just go right in here just a little bit. Just to tighten that up a little bit. Okay, now there's a few ways we can do this. We have it selected. So you can actually invert this and delete the background. I think that's what we'll do. Or you could just simply go edit now. You can copy it and you can paste it over there. 
but I kind of like to do the inversion. So we have that selected. We're going to select inverse, duplicate the layer, right? And then we hit the delete key. There you go. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Now on this one, we can still see a little green because we didn't use the green screen wizard. But this could be a picture. It doesn't have to be in front of a green screen. It's best to when you're cutting people out of a picture to have a just a very uh, neutral type background, uh, a wall or something you shot them in front of. But you can cut people out of any picture you want to cut them out of. Now with that done, we're going to go to Select, Deselect. Okay. And we can clean this up here a little bit just by using the... Uh, background eraser tool right we can cut this and we can I should go up here and maybe erase some of that go right in the green here we could be able to uh, take some of that out we can use the standard eraser tool lower our brush size even lower and get right in here just take some of that out this is not going to be perfect uh, folks this is just a demonstration to actually show you blending but I just wanted to get rid of some of this All right, let's just clean this up just a little bit right there. There we go. Okay, now that we have it cleaned up just a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to go to Select All, right? We're going to use our Move tool, and we're going to move this. Just drag this right on top of this picture. What happens is, you can see we created a new layer. Let's just minimize this now. We're done with that. Now, if we take this, and we just click on this background you can see that it does in fact look like we just pasted a picture on top of a picture okay now the way that I was always taught and the way that I learned to do this was to actually try to blend this in now somebody emailed me a while back and talked about feathering what feathering allows you to do is basically lighten the edges of this up and pull this in to your picture um, just kind of blending the edges that's a feather. Now there's another way to do this. And we are going to use right here. It's called the Blur Tool. Now what the Blur Tool allows us to do is blur the edges down. So if you just get right over the edges. You can actually blur this down. And what you're in fact doing is you're blending the top part. Right? You're blending this into the background. Because you see we're on the layer we're working on. We're on the layer we pulled into this. We're not blurring out the background. We're just blurring out the edges of the person that you actually pulled into the picture itself. You just want to do this on the edges so you're blurring everything in. That way you're kind of blurring it to make it look more like it's part of the picture. That's the important thing here. There you go. Now you kind of blurred that in. Now, the last part I like to show you <clears throat> about blending is the lighting effect. Because sometimes you have a well-lit background here and not a well-lit sub well subject. So what happens is it's going to almost look that this was taken somewhere else. So to get it well-lit, Remember, we can go here, right? We can go up here to our um, Create Adjustment Layer, and we're going to go to Levels, and just close this first. And on this level with it selected, do a Control G. You know, that's like one of my favorite uh, key combos there is Control G. What that does, it groups it with this layer. So when we're working with our levels of the person, we're not changing the background. Good, and then go ahead and double click on your levels. Then start working these levels in and out. See, that's going to darken it too much. Let's try to lighten it a little bit. Right, because the person's in the daylight, so you want to lighten it up somewhat so it looks like it's more lit without blowing it out. You don't want to overexpose everything. So just raise these very slowly until you get it to the point where it's pretty well lit. And click OK. Now you can see 
person's more well lit, it looks like she's out in the sunlight, right? Because here's the sun, and it looks like she's out in the sunlight. So it kind of looks more natural. You can also play when you're working with uh, pictures and pictures, you could play with, you know, where you have them stand. Just don't cut their legs off. We don't want them up here. But we could drop them down maybe. You could bring them back. Kind of wherever you want to put these people here, you can do that. See, it almost gives you the rule of thirds where you have more of the picture over here showing. No. So you have it more like that. Now let's click on that background. There you go. And I know, don't email me saying, Jack, you left green around there. I know I left the green around there. This was just a very fast uh, way to show you how to do that picture in picture. And remember, you can cut them out of any picture you want. Doesn't matter what the background is. Just take your time with your quick selection brush and you'll get it selected and it works out very, very well. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we're going to call this blending pictures is what we're going to call this one. Just blending it in, making it look more natural and just take your time. Like I said, if you take a person uh, standing and you put them on the back of an elephant, it's probably going to look like you actually took a picture and put on a picture. But something like this, you can play around and you can make the adjustment to make it even better. You know, like I may even take this and actually shrink her down some maybe. Maybe you want to get her more proportion to, uh, uh, to the whole scene. So you may want to do something like this, you know. Like she was standing outside. Or just bring her up like she was standing in the back, you know, or, or working the uh, backdrop. So any way you look at it, there's a lot you can do there. Hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Until next time, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.